Okay, this is going to be a tough one. I wasn't planning on making this video, yet I managed to procrastinate on it for like a month. But here we go. I bid you welcome or a welcome back. If you know my channel and me and the stuff that I do regularly, I make a lot of pieces of Harry Potter fan art. That's like one of the main things that I do. I've been in the fandom since 2019. At the same time, I'm a general trans ally and I'm a non-binary person myself. That being said, the situation with a certain British billionaire is getting more and more awkward. Back in early March, I saw this thing JK said, well, certainly did say some things. Things that literally qualify as a hate crime in British law at this point. Yes, I'm showing the video of Luxander. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description so you can see the whole context behind it. No, it's not an opinion. For the full context, watch this video. And that was the point when I decided to make this video. You know, at this point, it is just her mask slipping, but what did you expect, really? And that was the point when I decided to make this video and I didn't start writing the script nor working on the project for a few days, thinking that, well, sure, no other thing is going to come out from this situation. Hmm. That did not take long. <laughs> now, I actually made a to-do list for the time when this happens and I want to share it with you. Step one, act surprised. And that's it. That's the list. So what are we making today? Back in 2022, I made this fan art of Harry, or I should say a version of Harry where she's a trans woman. My inspiration should be really obvious. I just wanted to make a trans version of Harry, which is kind of a thing in fan fictions, at least a femme version, but I know it's really strange and out of place for everyone who is just a casual fan. So if this is your introduction to Femme Harry, well, welcome to the club. You are never allowed to leave now. The version I made back then was pretty good actually for my skill level of the time. I feel I was really proud of that version and despite many technical issues, I'm still fond of that piece. I simply felt that I could make a much better version of it today, which mostly succeeded Seeded, and more about that later. First I made a quick mock-up of how I would finalize the version if I didn't plan on remaking the whole face just to really see what uh, could be done with that version. Okay, I spent about 45 minutes on this piece. I really just wanted to touch up the original version before I essentially start a new one almost from scratch. So what I did here is like how I would approach this if I just wanted to clean it up and finalize the thing that I have here originally. So obviously I rotated around the face a little bit, resized the eyes, added some extra planes like these parts in the eyebrow as the facial expression is really changing. The first thing that I want to change is I want to rotate her face. I want her to look something more like this. What I want to really change beyond just rotating the face around and fixing all the errors that this picture has now, I want her to smile looking at you and just instead of just faintly having a smile in the corner of the mouth, I want her to look at you and smile in unapologetic euphoria. That is the feeling that I want. I want her to be crying from happiness while looking at you. I want a look of pure love, but not like romantic love. I want this universal, I am happy and I want you to know it, smile. And in order to do that, we will first, you know, do something like this. I did that on the wrong layer. Something like this. I did that with the wrong brush. Ah! Something like this. And then I will rebuild the whole face and uh, let's go. Here comes the scary part when I turn her face into a mush and rebuild it in the way I wanted. Tiny to a side note, I shouldn't have done it this way. I feel like I made my own work much harder by leaving the original underneath and I just confused myself by it. No wonder how the entire face started out really janky. Of course, after a few adjustments, it was turned into something viewable. It only took more fiddling around with the features until they were in their right place. Just a little side note, this is the ugliest 
ugly stage I've ever experienced. And you know, all the best things that start like this. So I'm really enthusiastic how it's going to go. Also here I made my first version of the smile that I ended up changing to a degree. I wanted a really open mouth smile first, but I couldn't make it not look like as if uh, she was laughing and just the expression was not really clear for me. So I ended up changing it and unfortunately though, after a few adjustments, I got to a point where uh, looking back at it, I actually liked that mouth more than the one on the final version. At one point the mouth became strange, I can't really explain why you will see what I mean, there's something with the 3D form of it that doesn't fully align with the rest of the face. But ju that's just the nature of the process and it's not always making everything better and you'll prefer a few things in their half finished state from time to time. I always see those 100,000 memes about people preferring their sketches over the final pictures and I feel like this version is like a little bit better than that. Speaking about her, yes, her. This is a male to female transgender Harry Potter who I named Rose Potter and you can't stop me. It's already done and she goes by she slash her pronouns these days. I should have sketched out the new face <laughs> instead of trying to distort and adjust and, 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 and squish everything into place. Uh, it would have been much easier, but I'm not going back. <laughs> Still haven't figured out what, what people do when they smile. While my past self is working on introducing Rose Potter's face to proper geometry and 3D form, why did I pick Rose as her name? Here's my idea for this version of the character. She came out as trans during their Hogwarts years, sometime before the start of Order of the Phoenix, so before the fifth year, so around the age of uh, 15, and first only her close friends knew about it, including the Weasley who turned out to be supporters. You might guess where this is going. She picked her name after a person named Rose who was related to the Weasley siblings. But first I will talk about the hand and get into the name in the longer rendering segment. The hand of the 2022 piece was oddly good actually, even if it's a bit stiff. If I remember correctly I was just looking at my own hand and I deliberately added a lot of saturation to it to make sure not to dull it out and it worked somehow. <laughs> and the new version became more expressive and lifelike, something filled with a bit more emotion rather than just being a relatively nice rendering with a boring pose. Okay, it is the next day. Here are some things that I want to want to change. I was thinking about making the hand touch the face or wipe the tears. I don't think that is going to work out. I much prefer the way the original was, giving like this supporting touch towards herself. Like it's the hand is not in like a defensive position or not like posing for the camera or something but like there's this reassuring touch on like the shoulder or like this collarbone area the head should be something like this or even smaller so much of this stuff is going to be removed and likely positioned or maybe i should just cut out the entire face and reposition it. I think that's gonna be the way to do it. Obviously we have the hand on a separate layer. I will make the color bones properly, like there will be one color bone here, the other one somewhere here, and it's going to be like completely visible. H how can I say it without making it sound weird? I, I really like the color bones, like they I find them beautiful. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. I always end up overdoing the color bones, but at the same time, I don't really mind it. Like I, I am really, I'm really fond of how the color bones look and how the whole uh, like upper chest is connected by them. This intermission is getting way too long, so let's get back into this and uh, do some facial surgeries. <laughs> Not the kind that you would expect. Uh, that that joke. That joke sounded much better in my head. It even sounded funny for a split second. I will just, just, just... Now, while you watch me make those beautiful neck pieces, more about the name. In canon, we have Rose Granger Weasley, who is the daughter of Ron and Hermione. And yes, that's her canon name, Granger Weasley having the name of both her parents, which is pretty cool. I don't think I ever saw anything like that in fiction before. You know, actual inclusion and progressive idea in the wizarding world. <laughs> okay, giving some credit where it's due. I looked around to find if she was named after another 
Canon character, but I couldn't find any, so here's my version. There was someone among the ancestors of the Weasley siblings named Rose, and uh, she was named after this person in the original timeline, but when our protagonist found a supportive family in the Weasleys and was looking for a new name, she picked the same person from the family and picked the name Rose. I wanted a simple name as well, just as... Uh, just as simple as Harry, but not a feminine version of Harry or anything with an age, something completely unique that still has a story behind it, so Rose it was, the new name of our hero. If you look at the footage, I might be at the point where I'm second guessing all my decisions. You remember when I said I should have started it actually over, like from scratch? That's because I did a lot of readjustments over and over again, especially here, and unfortunately not all of those were for the better, and the ones uh, that were didn't come easy. The biggest issue I had was with the geometry of the eyes, because it kept going all over the place until I really realized I pretty much didn't rotate the entire eye. I just pointed them upwards and made the rest of the face and even the upper half of the eyes rotated more or less in the right direction but the bottom of the eyes looks directly at the viewer and it took me way too much time to realize what I was doing wrong and why she kept looking so strange. No pun intended. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> looking strange because the eyes look strange. <laughs> yeah, this is where YouTubers make a joke like, okay, I hope I won't forget to cut that joke out, but I'm more self-aware than that, so I took it one step further. Yeah, this joke was awful. I should have deleted that whole paragraph, but you know, the longer you stretch a self-aware joke, the less funny it becomes. And eventually, you derive humor from how unfunny it is. Like now. Anyways, okay, before I manage to turn this face into this, I struggled for like half an hour, totally just bashing my head against the wall. And then I all of a sudden remember that there is this ancient and really like hidden technique that nobody talks about. They don't teach this anywhere. It, it is only designated for the privileged who are, who are told about this this magnificent technique and this technique is getting a reference photo for the stuff that you are struggling with. So I took this photo of myself. This is possibly the best photo that was ever taken of me. I'm gonna hide it really quick. Now I started doing this that I actually have the image inside the open broadcaster window and I just put it on my other monitor and when you're like looking at it on your second monitor it's like it's not like resizing it, it's not like looking at the overview window, it's not like, you know, mirroring and rotating around and literally standing up and walking away from the, from the, from the desk. For some reason, when I look at it in the other window, when I look at it inside the recording window on the second monitor, all of a sudden, my brain is not messed up anymore. I'm like, sure there is some reason behind it, <laughs> but I'm afraid to even ask, so let's just roll with it and <laughs> let's move on. I use the perspective ruler to make the glasses properly, as well as touching up the facial features when needed. I also remade the irises twice in a row, partially because I still didn't recognize how the further eye was pretty much off with its shape, and that made it look worse than it actually was but eventually I settled with the new irises. The thing that has been the bane of my existence ever since I started making portraits are eyelashes. Now, I don't know what it is in my brain that just refuses to create any proper eyelashes without doing them 50 times until it somehow works, but, but I pretty much did just that here and they ended up working somehow. <laughs> I still totally skipped the lower eyelashes. I promise I will get back to them one day sometime, but this wasn't that day. Somebody just tell me what I'm doing wrong with the eyelashes because I just can't figure them out. At least 
The glasses distract from the eyes to a degree and makes them less odd. I also made them intentionally a little bigger than they should have been, which is pretty much what I do all the time, but this time the distortion of the lens can explain why they are like that, even if they don't feel natural enough. Okay, I'm at the point now where I'm getting satisfied with the whole face. It's still, it still requires some works here and there. Essentially, I merged almost everything, like I have essentially like four layers, one of them being the character there's the hand separately we have the tears on the face i don't want to just merge them into the face yet technically i have the glasses in one group but it's you know it's just kept separately from everything now what i want to do is i want to go and uh, see what we can do with the hair i really want to redo significant portions of it and in order to properly do that of course i want to be modifying the silhouette itself just working with what we have on one layer now and uh, possibly not mess it up entirely. Look at the original version. It has a few things that works better. It has like more like colorful and vibrant skin. I think it has like a little bit more character to it, but it's progressing. I might put some extra saturation here and there on the face just to live up to that whole thing. But right now I really want to go and do something with the hair to make it properly finally. And I will turn these glasses off for now because it's just going to be bothering me, so let's go. Nearing the end, I just adjusted everything a bit. The hair went through the transformation it really needed. It doesn't feel like really dirty blonde anymore, but you can actually tell and see that it's black, like my heart and nail polish on the average day. Honestly, black hair is the one I like the least, but it happens to be the one that is the easiest to paint, at least for me. I just added the white rim light to it with some generic highlights and I added a little bit of the colors of the flag from the background, enough to make you recognize how they are just part of the same scene. I haven't mentioned the scars, so yes, the lighting board cuts through her eye to just make it more interesting, possibly to make it an element she had to struggle with more for the fact how visible it is now, but it ended up as uh, something she's proud of by the end of the story. And the other scar is the right on the hand that was modified to a degree now. In the original series, Harry, along with other students, gets abused by a teacher who makes them write with a cursed quill that cuts the letters they write into their skin, originally giving Harry a scar that says, I must not tell lies, but Rose was not just targeted for what Harry was targeted for, she had her identity attacked as well, and she was forced to write I am a boy as well. I was contemplating whether or not I should edit at all, and then I was thinking about removing it for the remake, but it would miss an important part of her story. Rose indeed received extra steps of abuse, and I wanted to include that. I am certain that her tears of joy over self-acceptance are more genuine and honest when you consider uh, she had to go through all of that. Not including them would have felt like not acknowledging the hardships of real trans people along with the incredible ability to overcome all of it. For the end of the video, I will read out a comment I made under someone else's video. See, just a few days ago, I saw this video essay by Madeline May about Fantastic Beasts and some, and about the some really big issues that the story has and she shared this other video afterwards made by Anthony, you can see that name on the screen, I'm sorry, titled, Was Harry Potter Ever Good? I do agree with literally everything in that video and I want to share my unfiltered thoughts in it from the comment that I wrote under that video, so here we go. HP was never part of my childhood other than seeing the movies pretty much once. Then I started making art at the age of 18, 19 in 2016, 17. Digital painting mostly, but then I started traditional drawing about a year ago too. And in 2019, I joined the fandom and mainly made HP fan art for about four years. I always didn't like the novels that much, but I was amazed by the fandom with all the fan art and fan fictions that are all so queer. I love them for that reason. And I am one of the queer HP fan artists who makes that stuff too, or I am 
at the moment still. I do have a few art projects I want to finish, like a series of witch portraits based on different virtues I started last year, or a group picture of the main six kids posing as Boris Voyaho characters, etc. But I don't think I want to start any more projects. I have a few pieces I started and left unfinished some time ago, some as early as 2022 that I made for fanfiction authors as gifts, and I'm no longer sure they'd be happy to receive them if I finish them. I made a trans Harry portrait uh I called Rose Potter not long ago, that was a remake of a 2021 piece, oops, I wrote 2021 instead of 2022, uh, yeah, that was that was 2022, I'm, I'm, I'm confident about that, anyways, but I struggled to write the script for the art video I'm making about it uh, for my YouTube channel. I feel like I neglected so many much better things I could have made in exchange of those. I absolutely love the community and I doubt I will ever stop reading fanfictions anytime soon. I haven't read All the Young Dudes, which is among the most popular ones I wanted to read for some time, but I want to move on to better things once I finish those few projects I still haven't finished. I think I will give a solid go to Earthsea and Six of Crows, they sound like uh, they are the things that would deserve all the attention HP has. I want to get into American Horror horror story once again. I made some pieces of uh, that too in the past and I plan to make more. That also has many issues in the story itself but still managed to show the most tragic and deeply personal stories I've seen and uh, managed to tell much more than HP without creating an entire huge world filled with just fluff. I feel like the only thing that makes me not entirely regret spending so much time with HP are finding a few amazing people People, including those who actually made me see queer people in a different way and made me realize I was one of them despite repressing it for almost 25 years. Getting attached to a few characters I made art pieces and wrote stories about to channel my own emotions and uh, try to touch others and making me emotionally invested enough to truly be affected by what the implications of this story are and what the author is doing at the time, so I can possibly become a better person in the future, even if it ends with such a bitter taste. Giving credit where credit is due, thank you Joanne for showing me who I should never become or never support by turning yourself into the example. And now here we are, here we have the final piece and tell me what you think about it, what you think about the whole project and about the rework and really about the whole topic as an extension. And I know if anyone saw this video who is not into HP as much as I am and many other people are, it will sound really strange and you just you just kept wondering what is what is happening <laughs> what is what is this topic like what am i even talking about here and uh, you might even want to tell me to go and touch some grass well i will have plenty of time to do that while this video is rendering jokes on you hey rose they are telling me to touch some grass what do you think about it actually i agree Thanks for sharing that information with me. Sometimes I tease upcoming projects and well, more often than not, I fail to deliver on them properly, but I wanted to mention one that is in the works, one traditionally drawn American horror story piece about a really tragic and deeply personal story within the American horror story universe featuring Madison and Kyle. And I made some studies of both characters. Here is one of medicine. These proportions are really all over the place, but I know what to look for uh, next time. And the other one is a much better Kyle Spencer. If my camera is complying, still a little bit wonky, but uh, it was nice to make this in preparation. And the topic of it uh, is of course gonna be coping with the aftermath of trauma and finding companionship with uh, people who share your worst experiences. Something that uh, Luna and Harry shared in HP to a degree, but uh, something much more gruesome, something that would not work if I did the same with uh, Harry and Luna. It is going to be 
my biggest traditional drawing project that I've ever made. And uh, I'm really excited to do that drawing with you if you decide to tag along. But for today, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day create something even if it's a remake of a piece that uh, people won't even really understand unless they share your same autistic hyper fixations to the last bit but most importantly don't forget to have fun while doing that farewell by the way when i'm not making uh, eye contact with you i'm making eye contact with my script and that the last paragraph was really hard to say out so I'm not always looking at you, dear viewer, but I'm always addressing you because I'm 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 having really deep feelings towards you, dear viewer. And this is turning into another really self-aware and way too overdone joke.